So, um, hi, good morning, and thank you for joining us once again. I'll just hold on a minute and allow other people to join us before we get started. Okay, yeah, so today's uh, Instagram Live is about uh, student dependence to the UK. So if you're here, I want to believe is either you're a dependent or you are the main applicants that have dependents. And this information I'll be sharing today is very important, you know, because this is a period where dependents are allowed to go with students to the UK. From January, that will no longer be allowed. So, um, and also we want you to know that getting a student visa or the successful application of the main applicant does not guarantee that dependent application will be granted. So there are things that you need to do right for you to, for your dependent or for you as a dependent to get your visa. So those are the things that we're going to be talking about here. So today I'll be talking about different categories of dependents who can, who can be your dependent. We'll talk about the document requirement for each of these category of um, dependent. We'll talk about the POF calculation for your dependent. And also I will mention some um, frequently asked questions about dependent application. So please, if you have questions, you can drop them. At the end of the session, I will take your questions. So yes, my name is Fok Konsi, and um, if you are just joining us, you've probably seen me for the first time. I work here at Nexi Concept in the visa department. Okay, so, but if you have seen me before, yeah, welcome back. So this uh, session is going to be very informative today and very educative. If you, are, if you know someone who should join, please send them the link and have them join us today. So yes, um, of course, as of today, students going to the UK for masters are able to go with their family, are able to go with dependents until January when that, when that would no longer be possible. But as of today, yes, if you have if you're a student going for a masters or a PhD in the UK, you are allowed to go with your dependent. Not if you are a BSc student, if you are going for an undergraduate program, please note that you cannot go with your dependent. So now the question is, who can be your dependent to the UK? There are three categories of dependents for students who are going to the UK. In fact, and for most of other countries, it also applies. But we're talking about UK for today. So there are three categories of 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 uh, family people who can be your dependent. The number one person is your spouse. Your spouse can be your dependent. Your wife or your husband can be your dependent, can apply as a dependent if you are going as a student. Number two is your married partner. So yes, this person, you're not married, you know, you know, you're know, you not married officially, you have not exchanged marital vows, but you are in a marital relationship. So yes, you can apply with this person as your dependent or married partner. You are not married, but you're in a relationship. So I'm going to be talking about the documentation later because there are different documents required for different categories. But just so you know the people that can apply as a dependent. The third category of persons that can apply as your dependent if you're going for study in the UK are your children under the age of 18. Please note that if you have any child who is an adult who is 18 or over, they can no longer join you as a dependent on your student visa. So children who are under the age of 18, your unmarried partner, someone you are in a marital relationship with, but you have not you have not married, you are not yet married, and your spouse, which is either your husband or your wife. Those are the three people that can apply as a dependent. Your parents cannot apply as your dependent. Your uncle cannot apply as your dependent. Only these three people that I have already mentioned. Of course, your parents can come to the UK to join you. And sorry, to visit. Yes, sorry, to visit. Your parents can come to the UK to visit you during the course of your stay or during the course of your study. But they are not applying as your dependent. And like I said earlier, that you've gotten a student visa does not automatically automatically means that your dependent will be given visa. Dependents also have their own visa requirements that should be met. And I guess because of the changing requirements and you know the UK trying to stop dependents in January, 
you need to be extra careful this time about your dependent application. So we at Nexi Concept, we are here to help you put in uh, your application, your dependent application that will be granted. Yes, because we've seen couples of, couple of applications for dependents that have been turned down. Right now, I have about two persons in the UK who call and they are crying. They are in the UK, they are their kids are not able to join, they are being refused visa and stuff. So, yes, please, as long as you are taking this opportunity, you are applying now in September or maybe November or December, whatever intake, before January, and you want to go with your family, please just be attentive and take note of whatever I will say today. If you have questions, please drop them. I will attend to them by the end of the session. So, yes, I'll talk about the first category, the spouse and the major excuse me and the major visa requirements for them now your spouse is your husband or your wife they can apply together at the same time as you and they can apply to join you later yes so um it doesn't because that's one of the questions that um people ask oh am i must i go with them at this time can they join me later so your spouse who i'm talking about now can as apply with you at the same time you, are, you submit your applications together or they can apply when your visa is out so the first document that they will need is of course they will need your cast statement as a student you have a cast your when your spouse is applying for their visa they're going to also need the cast as part of the document that they will be submitting now they are going to also fill the online application form just the way you filled your form your application does not cover their own, you know, in that sense of, you know, a putting in application. One application does not cover. So uh, you are going to, they are going to fill a separate application form just like you did. But there is a, there is a number on the main applicant's form that you are going to have on the dependent's form that is going to link the application together. So yes, that is just how it works. But you are going to fill a separate application for your spouse. So they need the, the CAS, you need to complete an online application form for them correctly. Then they need a bank statement with the required funds in it. Now, like I always say when I come here, I don't like to do the calculation online because sometimes it's very confusing, you know, because there are different uh, students with different calculations, different schools and their locations. So, but what they need to have in their statement will depend on if they are applying with you, if they are applying alone, if they are applying with your statement or they are using their, so it's going to really differ. But the requirement for them, the proof of funds, yes, the, the amount that they need to have in their account is if their school is inside London, your dependent needs £7,605. Uh, while if the, your, your dependent is outside London, that's a spouse, they need £6,120 to be in their account. If they are the only one that is applying, maybe you have applied and you have gotten your visa and they are making their application alone separately. This is all that they need to have in their account. Or if they are applying together with you and you want to put the money in the same account that you are using for yourself, you can do the you know, calculations together. So yes, so don't get it confused. If you are not clear, you can just reach out and we'll help you with the calculation that you need. But just have that information that your your client, your dependent spouse, if they are outside London, if your school is outside London, is £6,120. And if your school is in London, it is £7,605. So that's just basic uh, information about the proof of funds. So they need a bank statement. The bank statement is either in your name or in your spouse's name, whichever one is fine so yes um we talk about the cars the online the field application form online the bank statement they also need a tb certificate yes your spouse dependent also requires a tb certificate if she's if she's applying to uh, join you as a student dependent to the uk they need a tb certificate just the way you also got yours they need theirs so yes um of course, the international passport. Now you are going to now show this is one of the most important parts of the spouse application is to show that you are married to this person or this person is married to you as a main applicant and you guys are in a genuine relationship. 
so there are not really spelt out ways on by the uk via with us you know there, there's no infinite ways of showing these things but based on experience we can guide you on how you can genuinely prove that you're in a relationship or you're in a marital relationship or marriage with somebody so if you have a husband or a wife now people come people reach out to me and ask me oh do i need pictures how many pictures do i need honestly like i said it's not really spelled out as long as you're able to convince the visa officer that is working on your on your application that you are married to the main applicant so there are different different ways to do that one of the ways to do that is pictures now depending on the number of pictures and um, as regards the number of pictures that you are going to provide it depends on how recent your marriage is you know if for example you've been married for 10 15 years to this person you have kids already you have your marriage pictures anybody that sees it knows that this is not recent it's an old picture it's been long you got married you may not really need to put too many pictures you know because anybody that sees this knows that you, this people have been married for so long the best the marriage certificate is even old so you know i've had people that i put in just two pictures for them and they've gotten their visa for pictures but you know that picture is the way to prove and what we're doing is trying to prove so yes if you are recently married you're going to need your marriage pictures you're going to need a lot of pictures that you had together prior to marriage pictures you had it doesn't have to be pictures that you took in the studio it can be the one in fact the one that you took at home you know just to show that yes or you went out on date or things like that just to show that you guys really dated before you got married so it's not a problem that your marriage is recent people can choose to get married at any time there are people who have traveled on a study visa then three months into their study or four months into their study they return to nigeria to get married and they have gone with their spouse the most important thing is that you're able to prove you know to the uk vi that this person is really my wife this person is truly my husband those are the most important thing so pictures are a big way of showing that honestly so if you know that your marriage is recent please bring pictures a lot of them put a lot of pictures and it's not about having a, it's not about the number because i know someone that sent me pictures and just one outfit or just one particular picture she sent like 10. i said this is just one picture so different pictures old pictures that you've had together you know and then um phone conversations chats screenshot of of chats that you have with this person will also help you know to prove relationship and this is especially for people whose marriages have not been too long but when you've when you've had um if, when you've been married for a long time when you have kids to show the person of age when you have pictures that are very old and you know it's those ones are it helps but when it's a recent marriage please don't just put your wedding pictures some people it's just the one they have at the registry that they want to uh, you know put as many pictures as you want that as you have that you can lay your hands upon it's not too many you know because they need to be convinced that this marriage is not a fake one because a lot of you know people do these things and they are aware so yes you have to prove to them that your own marriage is a genuine marriage especially if it's recent and maybe there are no kids in it so that's for spouse you know and recently they started asking for about two weeks now they started asking for additional documents to prove that you and your spouse have lived together for the past two years do you understand prove that you and your spouse have lived together for the past two years those are the other documents that the UK Vienna requests for from spouse applicants or dependents. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of ways to show that too, but you know, you know it's just to show that you, are, you have the same address. So you have to bring your documents that have the address and your the main applicant also have to bring documents that have that same address. So it can be the tenancy agreement that you have from your landlord saying that you guys rented the house together. And now, if you have not actually stayed together for the period of two years, maybe, oh, for the last year, maybe you, were, you are married for five years and maybe your husband had to travel for a year or two for work or something. You have to explain that, okay, this is, is Dubai visa or is Dubai's work permit. He has been in Dubai for the past one year or for the past two years and we have not lived together for that period. We've lived apart. You have to explain it and bring proof. 
and then you are going to now show them that you guys were in communication the period that he was away for do you understand so in case you are asking well, what if i've not lived with my husband for two years you have to explain it and you have to show proof that the, while he was away or while she was away there was communication and the marriage was not terminated so like i was saying you have to prove that you have lived together if you actually have lived together for the past two years one of the ways to do that is tenancy agreement in both your names a landed uh, document in both your names carrying your residential address if you have bank statements joint uh, account with that address is also fine it's also going to save whatever document that carries both names or individual names but that have the address on it is going to find it could be your driver's license or her has whichever one just to show that you people have lived together it's just a way also of still checking that this marriage is a genuine marriage so there are other ways that are listed but these are the convenient ones that i feel that will be easy for nigerians to get because most times utility bills might be in the name of the landlord especially if you are renting a house it may not be in the name of the tenant so you may not be able to really get utility bills but you can get the tenancy agreement from your landlord you can get your driver's license if it has that address if your nin has the address of your house you can also use it so those are the two at least two documents now so i've mentioned for your spouse i've mentioned just to recap i've mentioned uh, the cars their online application form will be filled i've mentioned the bank statement the tb certificate the marriage certificate please marriage certificate will also be included and i've mentioned pictures then as regard the pictures i already explained to you that the number of pictures that you're going to need will, de will depend on how recent or how old your marriage is, is at the moment you might, you might also need to show chats or call logs whatever it is if your marriage is not that old but if your marriage is old really based on experience i know that the picture is not really a big thing you know some people's old ma uh, wedding pictures they even have the year on those pictures it's not those kind of pictures i used to have at that time those hard copy pictures the year will even be on the picture the best for the, the studio guy will also put his name so they know that that is and the wedding is old the marriage is old but if it's recent please lots of pictures chats if you if you send money to each other you can even bring the receipts you know of the transfer of the or of payments to show that yes if people were really in a relationship you, you send some money you send her money whatsapp chats call logs screenshots put them together and that the intention but the main thing is for you to convince whoever is working on your application that your marriage is genuine and make sure that they have the required forms in their account or in your account as the case may be so yes that is for that is for spouse i hope i did not miss anything there i think that's for spouse so now the, the second category that we're going to is let me let me talk about the children first because we have few unmarried partners. Most people are actually married. So, like I said, your children under the age of 18 can apply as your dependent to the UK if you're going for a master's or any program that is higher, not an undergraduate studies. If you're going for a master's, your, your children can join you, can apply with you as your dependent. Excuse me. So, um, now under the age of 18 if your child is 16 or 17 years they can apply as a dependent but you need to show that they are dependent on you like in everyday living you cater for them if they are 16 or 17 as at the time of application you don't need to provide additional documents but it is possible for them to apply with you but if they are 18, it has become impossible. Please note that. If they are 18, it has become impossible. But if they are 16 or 17, they can apply, but they need to show that you still cater for them and they are not living an independent life. So um, generally, they're also going to need your cars. They're going to need, before I go into the documents, now let me just say this. A child can only go with both parents to the UK. It is either both parents are already in the UK or they are applying uh, together 
with a child. A child is not allowed to go with a single parent to the UK. So there's nothing like, oh, my husband is not applying now. I'm the student. I'm a woman. I want to go with my child. I can't leave my child. My husband is busy with work. He can't go now. He can't apply now. They will not give the child visa. A child will only be granted a dependent visa if both parents have or are currently applying for a visa, a student visa to the UK. Or maybe one of the parents is already in the UK on, on any other permission apart from visits. So if your spouse is already in the UK, one of the parents is already in the UK, maybe as a British, and the other parent is applying from Nigeria as a student, then the child can apply together with that parent. But in a case where just one of the parents is applying, the child will not be given a visa. There are, other, there are conditions when this, you know, the, the, there are conditions when the child can be given visa, and that is when the parent applying is the only surviving parent. That means the other parent is dead, and there are documents to also provide for that. So if the child has just a parent because the other parent is dead, of course, you can go with your child. Or if you are separated or divorced or you're a single parent, you can go with that child. But you are going to need some documents to show that you have legal responsibility on the child. Uh, let me just let me just come again. Let me just recap that. So what I'm saying is a child is not permitted to travel with a single parent to the UK. So if you are the uh, main applicant and you want to go with your child, you must ensure that your partner or your husband, your spouse is applying at the same time as you or they are already in the UK on a permission apart from a visit visa. Yes. If not, you, you will not be able to, you will not be allowed to go with a child. The only exception to this is that you are either the, the sole surviving parent, that means the other parent is late, and you provide, you know, maybe the death certificate to that effect, or you are a single parent, you were never married to the father, or you are never married to the mom, and you have documents to back that up to, or you're, you're divorced. You were married to the parents, to the second parent before, but you guys are now divorced. Those are the only time that you can go alone with your child to the UK. And if you are separated, if you are divorced, if you are a single parent, you are going to need a court document that has given you sole custody of that child. Please note, it is going to be a court document. It's not an affidavit. It is not a constant letter from the other father. Constant letter will, not, will never work. To say, oh, the father has allowed me or the mother has allowed me, has given me the permission to go with this child. It will not go. The only document that you can guess that can make you, uh, the child get a visa is a document from a court, a court ruling, a court order that will say that we have given this person, this uh, uh, woman or this man, the sole and full custody of this child. Please, if you have questions, you can begin to drop them now. That is the only time that you can go alone with your child to the UK on your student visa. Court document, not consent from the other parent, not um, an affidavit of declaration that you are the parent or whatever. The, the court is going to sit on your case. They are going to give you the ruling to say that you are the sole parent. Please know that it is sole parental responsibility that you are going to have on that child. It's not shared. The moment it's shared, it doesn't serve the purpose. Nothing like, oh, it's shared responsibility. The father can be can have access, can come and visit whenever he likes, or the mother can come and visit whenever she likes. That won't work. It has, they have to give you the full custody of the child. In short, do you understand? That is the only time that you can go with a single parent. So even if you are married and your husband or your, or your wife is they are engaged here, you know, they have something that they are doing in Nigeria, they may not be able to stay you know, in the UK throughout the course of your study, they have to apply for visa, get a visa so that the child can also get a visa. Then they can choose to go return, then, you know, go between Nigeria and the UK. It doesn't really matter, but let him apply. Or let her apply. Let your spouse apply together with you so that your children can get their visa. Otherwise, like I said, you're going to need a court document that will now give you the sole responsibility of this child. Not shared responsibility, no access given to the other parent. 
you're going to have the full custody of that child. Let me use that word. I think that's better. You're going to have the full custody of that child before you can travel with the child. So either you are separated or you are divorced or you are, you know, or you are a single parent. And please note this. If you are traveling, if you are applying alone at this time, ensure that you mention the name of your children on your application form. I see people make a lot, a lot of mistakes with this because the children is not going with them at this time. They don't, they don't bother to include their name. So how do you now bring them in later? Please, there's a part on the application form where they're going to be asking, do you have dependents? Please ensure to put your children. They will ask you if you have people that financially rely on you then. If you have kids, please put them so that whenever you want to bring them within the time that is agreed, or within the time that you can bring your dependents, please ensure that you put them so that they can join you within those times. Otherwise, it will be difficult for you to bring them. So it doesn't matter if they are traveling with you or not this time. Please put their names on your application form. Let your, your spouse's name be there. Let your children's name be there on your application form so that it is easy for them to apply to join you whenever you want to bring them with you. Um, for children, they need cars. The bank statement calculation is the same as for the spouse. So if your, if your school is outside London, your children also need £6,120. If your school is in London, your children, each of them now needs £7,605 for each of your children if your school is inside London. The same calculation for spouse, it doesn't change for, the, for children, it's the same thing. Please do this calculation based on whether you are having the money in the same account as everybody or whichever account that you are going to use for them. Yes, so that is about the bank statement. Then they also need a TB test. It doesn't matter if the child is a year, uh, six months, three months, as long as this child is applying as your dependent, they need a TB test. Of course, I, I know, I'm aware that they may not really carry out the x-ray, but they will be examined by a doctor and they will be given a certificate. I think their TB fee is also lesser. But please note that they also need a TB certificate for their application. Now, if the child is already in school, they need to get a letter from their school. So this, this depends on, this, on the child's age and if the child is in school. If the child is not yet of school age and they are not in school, you don't need to provide it. But if the child is in school, please you need to get a letter from the school and attach to the application. Also, you need to write a consent letter. Whether or not you are applying together at the same time, you need to give your consent to your children to join you. A kind of consent or, or sponsorship letter, so to speak, will be attached with the application and of course very important key a key document is also their birth certificate so um your, your wife does not really need her birth certificate because she doesn't need to prove anything in regards to her parents but your children need their birth certificate to show that you are their parents if you have your both parents name and yes it will be to have the the kids full name so a birth certificate is a composite document for the child's application now if the child is 16 or 17 like i said earlier they can apply as your dependent but they need to show additional documents as proof that you are still responsible for them and they are not independent of you one of the things that you can also use as as proof is a letter from their school the school will you know write the letter that you are the one who pays the school fees, you are the one that enrolled, enrolled the child in the school, you have been responsible, you attend maybe PTA meetings. That is one of the, of the ways, you know, you can prove that this child who is 16 or 17 years old is still under you. This child is, you are still responsible for that child. And that way is if the child has a bank statement that carries your house address, you can also include it. It doesn't matter if there's no money in the account, just the bank statement showing the address where you people live together. If it's the same address, please, you can use that as proof that you are living together. This person lives in your house, so the child is still under your care. You can use that. School fees receipts. Now, I'm talking about 16 or 17 year old and child dependent. School fees receipts to show that, oh, you paid money to the school or whether you were giving the receipt from school or from your bank app. Whichever one, just to show whatever documents you can 
maybe you paid hospital bills in your name on behalf of the child to show that you need this child is still under your care those are the documents that you need for them otherwise you just need to provide a letter from school birth certificate and the other ones that i've mentioned except when they are 16 years or 17 years as at the time of application you may now need to provide additional documents to back that up but once they are 18 years it has become impossible for them to join you on your um, student visa so um now i've talked about the spouse the requirement i've talked about kids on, under the age of 18 now we have the unmarried partner so the uk allows you to bring your partner with you even though you are not married as long as you can also prove like you did for marriage that there is a genuine relationship between the two of you and that you are living together well, that's one of the things that they look at for for married partner that you have lived together for at least two years one of the ways to do that in addition to other documents is um the tenancy agreement or the or the land property in both names you know to show that yes you or whatever bills you have from the house maybe the receipts you used to pay money in your in both names whatever it is that carries both names to show that you guys are living together then pictures here yeah, is very key your phone conversations your call logs to show that you guys are living together and you are in a relationship so it is possible if you're not married as long as you're able to convince your caseworker that you are in, in an unmarried partner relationship with the person, it is possible for you to go with them to the UK. You don't have to be married to them, so to speak. So yes, um, the documents are basically the same with, with the married person now. This provides a lot of pictures if you are an unmarried partner. Provide a lot of pictures, provide charts, old pictures. Uh, if you have receipts of payments to one another, please also provide those ones to to help them to show that um, to help them to show that um, sorry please if you have questions I'm not seeing questions here please drop your questions though, so that I can take that so just anything as long as you're able to convince whoever is working on your case that your marriage your relationship is genuine then you are good to go it doesn't have to be that you are legally married and for the marriage certificate, people ask, oh, does it have to be from um, the Koyu registry? It doesn't have to be from the Koyu registry. Please, get your marriage certificate. So, um, it doesn't have to be from Koyu. It can be from your local government. It can be from your secretariat. It doesn't have to be from Koyu. Especially for those who are in Lagos. You don't have to go to that stress of going to Koyu because you want to use your marriage certificate for the purpose of visa. No. Okay, so if you don't have questions, I'm going to just take some frequently asked questions and then we'll call it a day. Um, so people ask, do my dependents have to pay, do they have to pay for IHS and visa? Yes, your dependent will also have to pay for IHS and visa fee. The same, just the way you paid yours too, they're going to pay for IHS and visa fee. So, but the amount that they pay varies per time. Most times when they are applying at the same time as you, they pay the same thing you're paying, you know, the same IHS for one year or for two years. They have to pay it. But sometimes when you have been in the UK for a while and you are bringing them months later, there's a reduction in the IHS. That's the immigration health surcharge. But the visa fee is usually the same thing. So if you even if you have a dependent that is two months, three months old, they are going to pay for IHS and visa. The, the amount they will pay might depend on when they are putting in the application. Do you understand? So yes, they are going to pay. It's not free. How soon can they join me in the UK? I've had people call me and say, ah, they say my cast will soon expire. I've not been able to bring my student. Is there a problem? Please note that the expiration of your cast does not affect your student's application. It only affects you as a main applicant. Even if your cast has expired, that's not, that doesn't mean that they can no longer join you. The only thing is, as long as you have your permission is still valid, you are still on your study visa, it has not expired, you can bring in your family. So there is really no deadline. However, 
because of the recent updates and by the UKVI to stop dependent application by January, we'll advise our students that as soon as possible because a lot of things are changing and some of these things are getting more difficult. Please take your family as soon as you can, but just know that there is really no deadline per se as long as your, your permission is still valid. Your, your visa is still valid. Um, sorry, your visa expires in three months. Your student um, permit is still valid. You can bring in your family to join you. But because of the ongoing changes by the UKVI, we advise that if you can, before the end of the year, please do take your family with you. Okay, yeah, so do they need a TB test? Yes, I've mentioned that they need a TB test. Just the same as you, regardless of how old they are. Okay. Please, what about dependent visa for UK skilled workers? So, of, of course, today is about um, student visas, but it's the same thing. It's the same. Dependent requirement is also the same for as it is for student and as it is for um, skilled workers. The only thing is they may not have to pay IHS fee. So, uh, Henry Tech, please, you can just reach out to me because I know that a lot of people don't need that information here. So, yes, it's basically the same thing for skilled workers too. But they may not have to pay IHS depending on the category of skilled workers visa. They may just have to, they may not even need to provide a bank statement. So, yes, you can reach out and let me give you more information on that depending on your own peculiar situation. And I still bring my kids next year. My course start date is September 12, 2023. So, um, like I said, we advise here that you take your dependents this year before the January intake. But we also know that, based on the information that we've gathered here and there, that as long as you are going in September, you are for September intake, that your dependent can train you anytime. We've seen school reach out to their student to tell them this. But there is not really any clear communication from, from, from UKVI concerning that. But schools have reached out to their students to tell them that as long as you are starting in September or November or December this year, you can bring in your family at any time. But please, eh, I'm, I'm not saying to you now, this is just a personal advice. If you can, take them before January. Do you understand? Well, yes, because it is not very clear. It is not explicit. Do you understand? It's not really explicit, but schools have informed their students, and of course, I, I know about uh, at least a school or two to tell them that it only affects people that their course is starting from January. Well, as long as you have applied now from this year, that September, October, November, December, you can always bring in your family later. But if you can, please, because the, the requirements are even changing, they're updating a lot of things. Even now, they're asking spouse for additional documents that wasn't there so please and then there are, there's also plan for them to increase the fees so if you can the earlier the better is it necessary for spouse to have separate accounts for the proof of funds no not at all it is not it's not it is not compulsory if you are applying together you can have the funds in the same account for everybody it doesn't have to be separate accounts Okay, so I see that there are no more questions. Um, so yes, if you have need, if you need somebody that will help you go through your application, even if you have applied for your student visa, you're already in the UK or you're still in Nigeria, you need someone that will help you put in your application for your dependent. Your dependent, please reach out to us, or even if it's for yourself as a main applicant, please reach out to us and let us help you put in your application. Like I always say, there is no need to waste time and money when you can get something done and once and for all. So if there's any refusal, there will not be room for your your visa fee is not refundable. So please, if you can, please reach out to us. Let's help you put in your dependent application at a fee that is not so much, so that all the process will not be a waste. Like I said, your visa or your, your the, the main applicant's visa does not automatically guarantee that the dependent will get visa. Especially if you are going as a single parent or you're separated and you're going with a child, 
if you are the parent of a child and you are going without the other partner, please, there are a lot of documents that I may not even be able to mention here that you need to put in for your for your child so that they can have the visa and they will be able to travel with you to the UK. We have a lot of single parents now in the UK who are not able to, you know, bring their dependent children and it's a lot of stress when you are away like that and you can your, your family can't join your your child is here in Nigeria, they can't join you or they are being denied visa over and over again. Please ensure that you reach out to us and let us put in your application. Somebody said um, what if they are applying together? They are applying separately. So um, it sometimes it depends on the time gap between the application. So this is a very dicey thing about whether you should use the main applicant's account or the dependent's account. So please, if you are not applying immediately, or if you are applying almost immediately with the main applicant, please reach out. Let's tell you how to go about this because it can be very dicey. If actually if you are now you are now trying to use a separate account so that they do not think that the account of the main applicant who has recently gotten a visa and maybe has not even traveled to the UK is what the dependent is now using. Did you get maybe the funds that the main applicant submitted is what they are now using for the dependents. So they will they may begin to ask you to also bring the uh, main applicant's uh, account. They want to see it or they want a backdated bank statement. So please, Daniel, please reach out. Let us understand exactly what the case is so that we can guide you better. Do you understand? Please, because it depends. Sometimes if the main applicant has traveled for, for so long, they've been in the UK, they know that, of course, you would have the money, the proof of funds in your account, you would have used it. Flight, rent, you've paid more tuition over time, you know. But if it's a recent application that you have just gotten, and then you are now bringing in a fresh account for your dependents or for your partner, whoever it is, they may begin to ask you to bring the previous uh, statement that you submitted so that it is not the same funds that you are moving between the statements. Okay, uh, big thumbs. Hi, good morning. <laughs> or oh, good afternoon, sorry. Thank you, professional immigration consultant. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. And so if there are no more questions, th that will be the end for today. Please ensure that you reach out to us if you need any help and let us put in an application for you. That will be seamless. So thank you so much. Once again, my name is Falconson. Thank you for joining us. See you guys next week. Bye.